Sorry. Yeah. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, by the way, if you have a burning desire to ask something before the end of the presentation, you can raise your hand and I will try to answer your questions. So, um, who am I? So, my name is Dennis. Someone can know me as a vegan grub. Um, I am exploit development and reverse engineering enthusiast at my spare time, doing pen tests as a daily job. Have all these uh, acronyms, especially I'm proud of barbecue. I'm the only one who believed that my ribs are the best. So, uh, well, not my, the, the ribs I cooked. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so what this talk is about. Uh, so, I will try to explain um, in a good manner, in an understandable manner, three zero to hero exploits that I choose. Um, I will also. Um, analyze how these exploit, exploits influenced um, mitigation techniques presented by Microsoft. Um, well, and at the end I will share my thoughts and we can uh, speak about whether we are going to expect something similar in recent time. What this talk is not about. So, um, I'm not going to blame uh, Microsoft. First of all, I'm not working there. The second thing is I firmly believe that building a complex software is not easier than breaking uh, this software. So, second thing, um, I'm not going to discuss consp conspiracy theories about the patch and why it was released so quickly. I have my own opinion about this and it's not in line with cons conspiracy theories. Um, I'm not going through the step-by-step -step exploit development. I will just show you the main interesting things for me that I found um, during um, like reverse engineering and walking through these three exploits. So it shouldn't be, it wouldn't be a talk about the SMB protocol internal, so I wouldn't bother you with loads of the details and stuff like that. So however, I assume you have some basic understanding of exploit development and what's actually happening there. So let's start with this one. So um, years ago, I feel myself like this when I saw something um, like MS 08067. Um, the general information. So this exploit then was, it's called warmable, but it will, it was used by Configure. Um, so malform RPC request doesn't require any um, good knowledge of internals, just fuzz and see what's happening. Plain directory traversal sequence will give you a crash, then you can start using the um, malformed RPC request and explore the environment. Um, at the end, I will publish the presentation on the GitHub so you can find this uh, links. So I really um, appreciate the work of these people. So explanation how it was found in the wild. Um, port in, uh, amazing uh, paper by MWR, uh, how they port this one to x64. It's very nice um, to read. Uh, and some other also um, uh, cool stuff to read. So um, I will give some quick overview. So here is the crash when we have the plane crash. So we have a heap here, we control it. We have some space here. We also control these and values and these values. Why it's important, I will show you on the next slide. So um, it's, it's quite straightforward. It doesn't require any additional tricks to actually get the code execution. So you have a crash um, and you overwrite the heap at 18 byte, uh, bytes offset. So we have several registers points to our buffer and several registers uh, rewrite it by the value in our buffer. So it's quite good. You have plenty of options to choose what to do. So um, what's we gonna do? We over we overwrite heap with address or we just find in the memory, GMP, EDX. Uh, we control the EDX, it points to our buffer. We have enough space not that much space as we want for putting the actual big shell code. We will use the egg hunter. Uh, just a quick recap that the egg hunter is a, uh, it was, I think the idea was came from scape and the idea was there is a small code that looking through memory pages for a special tag when it's mentioned twice uh, on the, on the, on the page, the execution transferred there and the rest of the shell code is executed. So you can put wherever you want, like a metapreter, uh, any reversal there. But if you have 
small amount of space, uh, you cannot do this. And if you cannot reach your shell code by jumping directly there, you will use the egg hunter. So um, we store and the place in the um, that we have between the heap and edx we have enough space for a counter and an op sled. We use an op sled, we jump there. Nop means no operation, you just slide down. Um, I think nop is an acronym for the exchange EX, EX, so the instruction is doing nothing. Uh, you slide down to the egg hunter, then the egg hunter is executed. Find your code there, um, so, and the rest of the things happening, as I said before. So what we do, so we control the EAP, we jump down to our buffer, jump EDX that I mentioned. Then we have, we just use, uh, as we, again, the control we put here, small jump back. So we just jump, jump to the knob sled, then the counter is executed, finding our final shell code somewhere else, and we get the profit. So again, overwrite heap, jump down, jump back, Egg Hunter, find the shell code execution. So it's quite straightforward. So um, we have, um, starting from XPSP2 and 2003 SP1, we have a Nix bit enabled. So when Nix actually marked the page as a code or data, if it's marked as data, you cannot execute the code on this page. So it's an excellent paper. Actually, it's from, I think, 2005, how to bypass the hardware adapt. Um, it was again done by Scape and uh, Skywing. Skywing. Um, so idea. So when the dev was presented, some software developers were a bit uh, surprised with that, and their software is not really working with dev. It was breaking the execution of their program. So they asked Microsoft, and Microsoft released uh, the thing how I can disable dev for my process. So if some software is not working, you still want to make it work, so there should be a feature that I can disable DEP. So the idea was to disable DEP uh, during the execution of the process. There are functions there that uh, you can use to, to disable it. So, so we search memory for opcodes and check whether they are in executable area. So it's actually uh, the method, there are several methods how you can disable DEP. So uh, I use this, uh, the method from this paper. It works fine uh, on my example. So this is just the name of this function. So where is the idea? The general idea is that um, we create the stack frame in a such a way that then it will pass the parameters that we need to this function and it will be it and it will enable or disable that whatever we want. I will show on um, the debugger layout uh, on the next slide what's actually happening there. So then we return to control buffer, jump back, and do the rest of the things. So this is how it looks like. So this is the function we are interested in to disable depth. This is the parameters we pass there. This is the 22 is the exact parameter that will disable depth. So we go, so we execute the call. We get zero, it means that's fine. Um, in this particular exploit, next steps was after this jump, there is a um, return instruction at the end of this, it will return back and uh, we specially adjust the ESP that it will still um, point to our buffer. Well, but it's not in the scope of this presentation, but if you have questions about how to <laughs> to end it, um, uh, so you can ask me and I can uh, show you uh, after the presentation. So, uh, conclusions, There's nothing much to say, so wrong path validation. Uh, easy to exploit without any protections. It's also bypassable using the Enix. So it was way ago. It's quite old and um, nothing, nothing much you can say about this. So if we go forward, so the next one I'm going to say is OS 09050. So the good thing here is it was initially um, found by Lauren Guffin, as he said, in three seconds of fuzziness MB2. Reliable exploit was made uh, using the trick by this amazing researcher, Peter Banya. I encourage you to read his paper about trampoline, how he made it. However, if you open the Metasploit, you will have um, the version written by Stefan Huer, and it has some limitations. So the plain idea here is there is a um, value in this MB packet, then with no, actually no checks except checking for null will be used 
to um, array index and then later this location will be pointed by our control value. So um, it's a bad thing, uh, as you understand. Um, for many, for some period of time, this uh, thing was, um, there was the only version by Stefan Huer. So this is the kudos going for these two blog posts from uh, Lauren. And this is the actual research uh, by Piotr, how to make it. So what's happening here? So we use uh, this function as a, um, we need to index an array with this function. So here we have, so the problem is uh, in exploit of Stefan Huer, we have a hard coded address from HAL heap. And the problem is if you run exploit against physical machine or you can uh, against the virtual machine, for example, on the virtual box, you wouldn't see on this address um, these instructions that you need. Uh, why you need these instructions? These instructions will help you to actually gain control execution by switching to your SMB uh, packet, so to your controlled value. So, but for example, if I run this against the virtual box here, I will find everything else in, except pop ESI. So, uh, this is executed, pop ESI, read, and you get the control here. So, to say in plain words, this value we specially created in our uh, SMB packet. Uh, for few reasons. The reason, the main reason is that this instruction wouldn't break the execution. The original magic, it's called magic value in header, uh, has a different value and it will break the execution of the exploit. So, um, this one is quite nice and start, and starting from this, we have some good improvements. So, um, some conclusions quick to find. Straight, quite straightforward, um, requires effort to make it reliable. So hard-coded addresses, well, probably not the, the best option. However, if you have a particular target you needed to, to get there right now, so you can spend a bit of time on debugging, finding these addresses, finding the proper address in the whole heap and uh, get it done. So ISLR, so kernel whole memory region is not a question of SLR and Windows Server 2008. So this, in order to exclude this box from future operating systems from Windows 8, we have an X HAL heap and non-page pool NX. So it's actually an X bit enabled for HAL heap and uh, non-page pool NX, so you cannot execute code there. So from Windows 8. So um, this is a bit tricky. Uh, this exploit is a bit tricky. It's required a bit of time uh, to, to make it reliable. So. Um, this, the face of most of the system engineers when they heard about this MS, they think, shit, like nothing good will, will happen to, to us this weekend. So um, quickly to see it. So released by Shadow Brokers, developed by Equation Group uh, for NSA or whatever. I'm not sure <laughs> uh, who did this one. So um, I found it's quite complicated and uh, it's required several steps to trigger vulnerability. I will try to go through them um, quickly and try to make it as clear as possible. For more information, you can use these papers. So excellent paper by Risk Sense. They show how they analyze the full exploit and they ported the exploit to the uh, Windows 10. I think it's 1507 release, I'm not sure. So uh, also good paper by uh, Trend Micro. Um, this Chinese guy uh, made also good analysis. So you need to be careful when you read which which version of Eternal Blue they use. Some of them use initial one from the first bunch. Some of them are using the version that was ported to Metasploit. So it would be a bit different. So here is uh, plenty of exploits uh, from Warwit. And here is also, um, let's say, the actual exploit and some uh, clarification from Packet Store. Okay, general concept. It's also, if we go to plain details, it's also quite, um, not straightforward, but it, you, you will be, I will try to do everything that you will understand it. So buffer overflow on the second mem move or mem CP operation. So in my case, I see mem CP, some other operating systems, there is use mem move. So I use a uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1 X64 Russian version. So 
uh, actually the overflow happens here. The size is calculated in another function, and there is an error when they try to subtract uh, the word to word. So size of this list, so what is this? What's actually this list here? It's a file extended attribute, it's actually file characteristics. So in reality here, um, when, this can, when this new list is created with the overflow or whatever, so it's a quite large kernel pool allocation, so because it's too big for the uh, non-large pool. So last iteration over, the last iteration overwrite next memory area. So we need to have these two buffers going one by one. So to achieve this, both buffers should be aligned. Um, in order to get this aligning, the kernel, kernel pool should be sprayed, or it's called groom, in this case it, they, it's called groom, groomed. So we can see that all these operations go on successfully when we have that this, when we have the return from service like this status and value parameter. In every exploit when you run wherever it is from the fast bunch or uh, from the meta exploit, it will show you this means well everything is good. We are on the way to get to the target. So exploit may require several tries if the, if these buffers would be one by one to require several tries. And also I read in one of the papers that it uh, requires actually sometimes if it's not successful a cool off time when everything will be getting back to the until you can reboot the target so this is an excellent I, th I found this picture the most helpful uh, from from trend micro site so this is the way they show how they feel and prepare this, so the, this is actually the grooming uh, process, how they actually prepare this non-page tool for successful overflow. So um, they use different chunks, sending them one by one, keep it, get the overflow here. So if you want to have more details, you can uh, speak with me after the talk and I will try to explain you as much as I can. So um, go on to the next slide. So this is actually what I try to show, this is this, this is the exact value after the overflow. So I have different offsets, obviously, from uh, because I use the different version of operating system, have different offsets like this. Um, then I use the um, this is this shell code is used by the guys in the risk sense paper. So I just have this and see that this is the address where it's actually. So I put initial breakpoint here, and uh, this is the start of the shell code that will be executed. So it's the the kernel one. So uh, conclusions: um, so sophisticated exploits require several steps to achieve reliable execution. Um, well, most of these structures uh, are undocumented, so it's required some additional reverse engineering. And uh, most of this information was from uh, the actual f first bunch. So people have a look at the exploit and start reversing it. So in depth, some protocol knowledge also required uh, to see how you can interact with the driver and what will be the output from there. So um, from Redstone one, so this is actually uh, these two things are from the paper when they put uh, when this risk sense guy ported the exploit against uh, Windows ten. These updates uh, were coming out. So update from domain page entries to prevent so page table table entries is a um, uh, structure that they use uh, to uh, for and they require to patch it to to bypass dep. The last one, the whole heap is randomized, so SLR bypass is not uh, is not more fe feasible. Final thoughts. So I would say that their security uh, improved very well during the past years. Um, from my point of view, like reliable exploitation that works around the versions from like Windows 8 to Windows 10, like to develop this exploit, it's much harder now. It requires loads of knowledge um, of different uh, operating system internals. Um, I don't myself, I don't expect any new um, uh, like similar vulnerabilities in f in nearest future until there is a new class of bugs will be used for that. So, for example, years ago uh, there were people who, um, like, I mean, every, everybody was doing the stack corruption at some moment. Um, they start using heap, so it's like a new class. 
Um, well, I would say also uh, they great work. So they don't only patch the operating system. Uh, they also uh, try to create prevention for actual class of bugs and get rid of them. So um, I found it quite quite good. So um, any questions? If you have any questions, just after, for example, not now, you can catch me and we can speak about. If not before, I would like to thank. I would like to thank um, uh, Dominic who helped me, and I would like to help the, uh, to thank the organizers of this event. Thank you guys, and thanks for your attention.